time to get busy at this motherfucker. Like we always do about this time. What's up, everybody? On today's episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast, don't you just sometimes wish that Thanos would just snap his finger across the political landscape and, you know, make some things just sort of turn into dust, blow away, you know, like they did Black Panther and that still make me sad. So sad. We're going to talk about that. We're going to also talk about uh, some interesting voicemail comments we got from our favorite voicemail dropper, Memphis Diva. Thanksgiving's coming up, so, you know, I'm going to ask Jay, uh, you know, what kind of food he loves to eat at Thanksgiving. And then, we're going to talk about some rap label mates that really just never made it mainstream, even though we know they're dope. All that and more. Today's episode of the Hashtag Blackout Podcast. Pew, 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 pew. Damn, I dropped my pen. What up, everybody? This is DJ from Just In Time with the JT Baggers Podcast. When I'm not going down a rabbit hole with my two buddies, I'm listening to the Hashtag Blackout Podcast and rubbing all my meat down with some hooks, rubs, and spices. I'm blacking out. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Like Mr. Kata to episode 110. CN, or I think CN, yes? I don't know. Of the hashtag Blackout Podcast. I'm Jared. And I am Jay. And we are back and at it again. Jay, how's it going, man? How was your week? Oh, man. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, week was tired. good. Yeah, I am tired, man. Uh, week was all right. I mean, it's getting colder here. I do not like the cold. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just one of those people. I'm a, I'm, like I've been saying for years, I'm a tropical person. I like it nice and warm, possibly even hot, you know? Yeah. But just like 40 degrees and stuff, I'm a wimp about it. So call me what you want. Uh, yeah, but other than that, it's uh, just another week, another decent week. You know, trying to trying to make it to Thanksgiving, trying to make it to Christmas so I could have more time off, so I could just chill. Yeah, for you sure, know? for sure. Yeah, how about yeah, you, man? Um, yeah, it was it was a crazy week because it was it was busy, uh, you know, work wise and whatnot. And then, um, uh, you know, I I don't know, I was sort of under the weather the last couple of days of the week. So, uh, you know, man, I was just not feeling it i was just sort of chilling at the house trying to get better uh you know but also sort of working from home just because there's stuff to do uh so you know it's it's all right (laughs) it was an okay week but man yeah i'm talking it's 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 getting cold here uh i think last night uh they said it was supposed to snow a little bit uh you know for a couple hours so i don't know i haven't looked outside yet Uh, i made a drop may have dropped and then you know sort of sort of melted already but um yeah man it's definitely getting cold it got down to the 20s last mm. night nope um mm-hmm. nope. Nope. nope it'll warm back up to like 50 today probably and then you know drop again so so nah i mean hey at least we're not in canada where it's probably been snowing for like a couple months now so so we're probably fine um but no nah, yeah man so this week you know obviously uh you know we're looking forward to thanksgiving good food on the way what what is the what is the type of food you like to have during thanksgiving what's your favorite thanksgiving treat oh man so growing up the thing i loved most was my grandmother's uh rice dressing or dirty rice however however you Mm -hmm. call it depending on where you're from uh that cornbread dressing Mm-hmm. Uh, my aunt's turkey, cause she she seasons a turkey like no other, no other person mm-hmm. I have ever met. Uh, yeah, man, that's 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 pretty much about it. And her mac and cheese, but now nowadays, man, I love my wife's mac and cheese. She makes a, a dope one, you know. So yeah. she she has a good mac and cheese. Uh, yeah, eh, that's about it, man. I mean. You know, sweet potato pie, pecan pie, they're cool and all. But, you know, I mean, dessert's like not on the top of my list at, at this time of year. But, you know, that's that's about yeah. it, man. Dresses and turkey yeah. and mac and cheese. You know. 
But I tell you, the time I do miss, the times I do miss, like when we used to all get together in Houston, when Mm -hmm. majority of the family was alive and and well, you know, and we have like this Mm -hmm. big smorgasbord of food, just a table Mm -hmm. full of food. We just walk down the line and grab stuff. But, you know, of course, nowadays, a lot of the the older folks have are passing on and stuff, and we're all scattered throughout mm-hmm. the <laughs> scattered throughout the country. So, kind of yeah. hard to get together. Yeah. yeah. What about you? That's true, man. Yeah, that's that that yeah that makes me reminisce that, those days too. And yeah, I could definitely remember our aunt's uh, pork roast. Um, okay. Always great. Uh, you know, my mom's cornbread dressing. Uh, love it, love it, love it. Uh, yeah, and um, dirty rice, man. Um, yeah, our, our, you know, our connected side of the family, man, I'll tell you, boy, they got some good food up in there. So Mm -hmm. all those things, uh, sweet potato pie, um, you know, never go wrong with that. Uh, pecan pie, uh, can never go wrong with that. I, I'm 99% sure I don't ever remember having a pumpkin pie at any of our family (laughs) gatherings. I was just about to ask. (laughs) I was just about to ask. I don't remember that. that. Now, Never. now that we have gotten older and we've married, uh, I guess outside mm-hmm. of our, our race that we grew up, yeah, with, we've yeah. we've transitioned to the the pumpkin pie. Well, I guess we we've encountered the pumpkin pie now. Yeah, uh, I, I still bring sweet potato pie. Like, yeah. I well, here's a here's a cra- crazy thing. Pie, my yeah. my sister in law, my wife's brother's wife, she's black. Mm-hmm. And she's like, nah, I can't do the pumpkin pie. So she makes her own sweet potato pie. <laughs> yeah, and That's brings a good it idea, man. And the crazy I'm thing is, you. it looks similar, just like a tad, uh, a few shades darker, mm-hmm. <laughs> depending on, on, on how you make it. But <laughs> Isn't that wild? Black people, black people love sweet potato pie, and it's darker than pumpkin pie. Yeah. You know, uh, other races, shall we say, <laughs> like the pumpkin pie, and it's a lighter shade. Yeah, it's uh, like I never had pumpkin hilarious. pie growing up. I was kind of scared to, to even try it, but I mean, I'll eat it, but it's not like mm-hmm. at the top of my list. I have to like put whipped cream and all kind of other stuff on top of it. But yeah. my kids love it. My kids love it better than sweet potato pie, which is a shame. Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely, yeah. I definitely am a fan of uh of all desserts um but pumpkin pie i just never truly got into but hey if that's the only thing there mm-hmm. as long as there's some whipped cream around or something like that yeah you go for I'll it i'll throw it on top but nah if i'm if if it's a family gathering and i'm responsible for anything i will also bring a pumpkin pie Bruh. <laughs> or not i'm sorry i messed sweet up potato. sweet potato pie yeah Man. just because just because i know that the people making dessert yeah, you know, they oh, are man. very crafty and handy at dessert making. I know they ain't gonna bring those sweet potato pies. So Even at my I job, where I'm like the only person of color mm-hmm. <laughs> for like a uh, Thanksgiving uh, type, uh, what do you call it, potlucks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They'll bring in dessert. Mm-hmm. It's just always pumpkin pie Thanks. or some kind of like lemon meringue pie or something like that. Mm-hmm. And all the other foods are like questionable, as far as like the palate uh-huh. that I grew up eating. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, I know what you mean. It's like who the hell puts like pecans in their dressing and stuff? Nah, gee, nah, nah. You can't be start. You can't start throwing like pecans in there. I see people put like you know grapes and cranberries nah, and nah. blueberries up in their dress and I'm like nah you, like, this must be stove top or chop, this ain't chopped real. apples really I encountered a, encountered a chopped apples like little like cubes of apples inside a nah, dress nah fam nah I, that's that's ridiculous that's foolishness that's 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 stove top that's like shake and bake it's not even real mm-hmm. uh, it reminds me of one of my ex-co-workers uh, who um, I walked into the kitchen one day at work and she was warming up. She was mixing up her grits that she just warmed up. Mm-hmm. And I saw like these little blue and red chunks in there. Oh, and yeah. Brown I you little chunks. That. I was like, she put like granola and cranberries and blueberries in her grits. I was mm-hmm. like, nah. No, 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 no. You yeah. have destroyed your grits. Right. So I had to I had to show her the real deal one day and she thought it was good. But yeah, man, it's it, it's crazy when you get to these office potlucks or these family meals. Uh and you know, you have you either have like that one, uh, you know, relative 
or set of relatives who bring like the random, the most random stuff, uh, you know, the most random uh, uh, food uh, dishes or whatever. Or you have that extremely, you know, uh, uh, quote unquote avant garde, like uh, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, coworker who mm-hmm. decides to show up, you know, with oh, this is my this is my family special recipe. Or, you know, I'm eating, I'm eating <laughs> vegan now, which, you know, there's no problem with being yeah. vegan or pescatarian or anything like that. But yeah, you, you throw yeah. a wrench into the plans when you start yeah. bringing foolishness, you know, to the table. Just bring the regular food like it's supposed to be mm-hmm. or don't bring it at all. Yeah. And you, are, you already know whose food be nasty when you see all them plates turned upside down in the trash can. <laughs> right? That's the best gauge, you know, like you look and you see. Okay, so we recently had a chili cook-off. Um, oh, man. Don't even get me started and, on that. Mm-mm. And there were, there were like, I think 12 people made chili, um, you know, and there was a contest to see who won. Uh, and there were some great chilies in there, and there were also some very suspect and horrible chilies in there. Um, and, yeah, man, uh, you, could, you could definitely ch- tell by looking at the trash can, you know, and looking <laughs> at the chili... At, at the slow cookers that had the chili in it, mm-hmm. who had chili left, how much was left, and which they were, because you were like, yeah, that was right, that was not a good one, or that tasted like it was just beans and vegetables and meat yeah. just sitting in the water. Now, <laughs> now tell me, did anybody put chocolate chips in their chili? No, thank goodness, no, I didn't Dude, see that. We had That's this at my boring. last job, where again, uh, there was only like three people of color out of a mm-hmm. office of maybe 60 or 70 <laughs> mm-hmm. they put chocolate chips in their chili and no. they nope. they won the black people did or just no 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 just the other did. the other folks oh wow chocolate chips in what chili even what what is i don't even it's like what made you want to do that was that like a mistake or... i don't even Understand that there's no mistake. You don't accidentally knock the chocolate chips into your chili. Like that's just not an accident. They did that on purpose. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I don't know. That's so sad. I it it does not even sound. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't even sound good, man. It just who would do that? Come on, people. You got to think. You know, I think it's one of these things. Like if you ever watch one of those, um, and I know we've gotten way off on a rant on this. Sorry, <laughs> because uh, we go on and on on food, but like. If you watch those uh, shows like on the Food Network or something like that, where it's like the world's wet, world's worst cook or whatever, mm-hmm. um, you know, watch any show where there's, you know, they're trying to teach people or the great bacon, what is it called? Like great bacon show? I can't remember what it's called. Or Nailed It, Nailed It. There's a new show on Netflix, I think, called Nailed It. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, they have these horrible cooks or horrible bakers on there trying to create something. And, and on the world's worst cooks, excuse me, they... Um, They tell them at the beginning, you know, make, make your best dish, like make your best dish and present it to me, you know, just so I can see like where sort of where you're starting it. Right. Mm -hmm. Man, I remember somebody doing, it was almost like what Elf ate, like his favorite thing. It was like spaghetti with like M&M's and, Mm -hmm. and red sauce. And then like they put honey because they thought like they wanted to make it a little touch sweeter or, or it's like fried chicken but like it's fried with like no seasoning, you know what I'm saying? And then they dress it with like chocolate sauce. Like, come on, dog. Right. Who put who put Hershey chocolate syrup on their fried chicken? Come on, G. Come on. It's it's not, <sighs> you, you're just you're just ridiculous. Honey is one thing. You know what? Chocolate sauce is. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't no. No. No, not not a good thing. Not a good thing. And you you know what? Um, another thing that's not a good thing: the black white girl we talked about from last episode. Uh-huh. You know she's she's trying to she's trying to turn you know this Doctor Phil appearance into her being like the next bad baby. Um, oh, of course. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And you know I, I don't think I don't think America's gonna let her do it. I, I don't think so. Uh, maybe she'll be the next bad baby for the KKK, <laughs> you know, since she wants to join them or something or wants to go to one of their meetings, which is also stupid. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I know that's what she's trying to do. So it, it seems like her sister is out at her. So I, I'm, yeah. I think the jury's still out on if that's, you know, 
if that if the sister is being uh, 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 you know truthful or whatever, but still, right. it's sort of you know it's sort of one of those things. It's time it's time for us to start you know squashing all this. Uh, you know, it's time for us to start squashing all these people who think that they are. Or, or try, or I guess, what am I trying to say? Squash all the, the, these people who think that they are, you know, trying to, trying to become, you know, popular off of some foolishness like that. Mm-hmm. I just think it's time to drop that thing. So, anyway, so there's that. And there's also the politics this week. You know, there's always some foolishness going on when there's elections, it seems. Of course. Um, you know, it always seems like, there needs to be like Florida. There's always recounts in Florida. Why? Why can't Florida get it together? You yeah. know. And then uh, Georgia too. Um, Georgia. Was that Stacey, Stacey Abrams and what was the other guy? Uh, I forgot his name, but he ended up winning, if I'm not mistaken. But the thing about him okay, is, right? it, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty sure he he won that one. I, I yeah, because I didn't hear anything about the whole. You know, uh, Stacey Abrams winning, but he, the guy, is actually like head over all the, I guess, the voting places and, and stuff like that. So he kind of has mm-hmm. like control over, you know, voting, uh, I guess, restrictions and all this other stuff like that. So I think there was a mm-hmm. lot of people getting their vote votes suppressed in in uh yeah. in Florida. I mean, oh, not yeah. Florida, Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, in Georgia and in Florida, um, uh, you know, there's both both of those places. You know, there's there's lots of there's lots of uh, uh, reports. Like every single time that there's an election, uh, there's reports of people in more urban areas. I wouldn't even always say it's people of color, but I just say people in more urban areas. So you know, in cities or in, even also in neighborhoods where uh, you know there are people of color or people who you know or majority of people of color. You know, whose votes either aren't counted or they're, you know, some that are thrown out, like you said, because of restrictions or, you know, they they don't finish them, you know, in a time. They don't they don't get them in in a timely manner. So they end up having to hand count them. Mm-hmm. And then even when they hand count them, they're like like there's a there's a district here in Utah where where, um, you know, they said they still had to hand count votes mm-hmm. uh, and they weren't sure, you know, two, three days after I was like. What are, what are you doing for eight to ten hours a day if you just sitting there hand counting votes, you know, and it's you and a team of twenty other people right. hand count votes and you still don't know, so you can't report yet. I mean, it's been two three days. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I understand. I understand that election night is a long night. You know, and I, I understand mm-hmm. that. Uh, you know, but if you have that night, you got the next day. You got the next day. You got the next day to to count and get it together. Like, what takes you so long to get it? And it's, how it's is it crazy. so hard? You know, uh, and this year, I know this year may have been the first time where they had like online voting, right? Wow. Uh, where you can actually, where you can actually log in and, you know, put in your, put in your information. Uh, you know, it's a one timer vote. So it's not like you can, I, I guess it's not like you can just hack it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, I'm sure and, some and smart people double could vote probably yourself. Did it. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Uh, I'm sure there's a way, but you know, this was, this is one of those things. I remember them saying, uh, I remember just popping onto one of those ABC, you know, like vote following, uh, uh, shows. And they were talking about, um, you know, stay online, you know, you could still vote, you know, all the way until 10 o'clock tonight or something mm-hmm. crazy like that. And it was, it was sort of crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're online I was like, what? Uh-huh. so, uh-huh. all right. So I'm reading yes. up on the Abrams and, uh, Brian Kemp, that's his name, mm-hmm. the Republican. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so they're pretty much dead, locked in. One, uh, Kemp has fifty point two percent, and Abrams has forty eight point seven. So there's yeah. still like a ton of votes that are unaccounted for. Yeah, and I bet they're all like probably from like Atlanta. <laughs> it, I, man, I don't know what it is. There's like a big article about it, but they're wanting yeah. her to just, you know, pretty much just uh say, hey, he won. We're not even going to worry about no. pushing to, to find where these votes are, are at. Yeah, so, no. it's yeah, the thing that's though, crazy. Like, I I saw that. Yeah, I saw that they're trying to they're trying to push her to 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 go ahead and concede. Mm-hmm. And 
And this is, it's like, I don't know, man. I mean, if you are running the race, if you put in all this time and money and energy, right. you know, to try to win um, and, and, you know, try to change things. And then, uh, you know, you are pushed to, you know, pushed to concede when there's still a big question out there, when there's still an opportunity, there's a chance, you know, for you to swing the tide. Why not just stay in it until, you know, until, until it, until it, you know, is found out why on both sides, really, like if you win or if you're up, mm-hmm. why don't you want to just win fair and square? Like, don't yeah. you want there to never be a question? You know, I know that some politicians or most politicians are probably like, nah, you know, forget that. Um, you know, if I'm winning, I want to win and just be done with it. And I don't care right. if there's a question because that's the way politics are really. They don't really care about anybody, but you know, their, their pocketbooks. That's what it seems like sometimes. Yep. Um, but still though, like I would, I would much more rather want to be the person that knows that I won, you know, when the last vote was counted, hmm. I won it by one or lost by one or more. You know what I'm saying? I want to be that guy. I don't want to be the guy who, you know, had question, uh, you know, that, that, and there was all this suppression issues and there was, you know, potentially, you know, another like 200,000 votes out there that were never counted. Nah, nah, forget that, man. I just want to know. I, I would want to know for real, but yeah. hey, man, you're a politician, you know, you just want to go out there, you want go to out there and, and, and win, you know, that's it. So that's right. whatever. Anyhow, anyhow, yeah, so there's a bunch of foolishness going on in this week. You know what I'm saying? We got politics. You know, we got uh, uh, our current president, uh, you know, calling three women of color journalists, uh, you know, who are very highly respected and good at their job, uh, mm-hmm. you know, stupid and berating them in the last few days. Uh, but the man still gets away with, you know, he still gets away with it. He can still just say what he wants to say. He called the forest fires in California, which basically destroyed a whole town, killed people and displaced, you know, so many people, destroyed houses. He called it mismanagement of the budget. That's stupid. For national parks, uh, which is doesn't make any sense because you can't stop lightning from happening. <laughs> you know, you can't just like throw money at lightning and say, "Hey, don't you come down here." Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't. You can't, and you can't stop stupid. Sadly, you know, because there's always people out there. Yeah, because we matter. have the president. Can't well, yeah, stop there you go. Stupid. Uh, but you know, there's always like a Smokey Bear commercial. There, there's always like one of these things, you know, saying, "Hey, you you can prevent forest fires mm-hmm. if you follow these steps." Right. Sadly, there's always people who either don't care what Smokey says, don't follow the commercials, or you know, don't do their due diligence and get whatever fires out, you know, that they need to, or they throw a cigarette out or something mm-hmm. like that that's going to yep. cause you know these these blazes. And I think this this one, you know, this worst one here was this bad one here was really caused by um you know natural causes but it's it doesn't make sense to me that the man would say it's mis- mismanagement of funds um um as to why something that's a natural disaster happened like it doesn't it doesn't make sense it yeah. just doesn't make sense if you go to california there's all kinds of signs and and commercials uh you know that talk about preventing fires especially this time of year you know when they have uh you know winds that are happening in a certain direction and you know it blows uh you know it blows things a certain direction just like it happened last year you know with mm-hmm. the terrible fires that they had last year you know you can't you can't throw money at the wind and and think that's going to put up a wall that's going <laughs> to stop, right. stop the wind from blowing mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah so it is it's just a crazy week but you know, with all this being said, um, you know, with our, our president, uh, you know, finally taking the resignation of Jeff Sessions, who was one of his dumb buddies, um, we had a one's got to stay this week with dumb friends. That's so right. So we had Cole from Martin. We had Ed, uh, really from Good Burger, but really Keenan and Kel did a whole mm-hmm. lot of things together. But yeah, Ed from Good Burger, sure. Waldo from Family Matters, Jazz, uh, from uh, Fresh Prince Jr. from My Wife and Kids, and then Bullethead from the Steve Harvey Show. So, man, we got a lot of great responses here. Lots. A lot of great responses. So, uh, you want to run through some of <clears throat> All right. So, Ramblin' Rams with Rob. B-Rob says, Jazz got to stay. Quarter Wolf says, Jazzy Jeff. The John Effect says, Cole. 
Cold, dumb as a box of rocks, but he's a good friend. Honorable mention goes to Bullethead. Uh, let's see. Carla Michelle One says Waldo. Ledge DVS says Jazz pretty clearly. Big Baba Rob says Jazz. Uh, that brother has all the connections. Cole is a solid second. Outspoken Diva says a few quality friends on here, but I pick Jazz. Fresco Fame says Jazz. Yasir1997 <laughs> says something in Arabic, I guess. Uh, <laughs> we'll just say it's probably Jazz. <laughs> yeah. Gil B. Producing says number one is Ed from Good Burger because he's loyal as fuck. Then an honorable mention to Jazz because he loyal and I rock with him. LOL. Jonathan Kells says Junior. Denise Henderson Austin says Waldo, Raldo, Faldo from Illinois. <laughs> if y'all good, remember that good. episode. Uh, starting Five Podcast <laughs> says Jazz. Dopest handshake ever. Smoking Mirrors Pod says Ed has to stay dumb as hell but loyal as fuck. I'm just I'm Jesse yo says I'm keeping cool. Sir so shit. Sayer Sayer so. I'm going with jazz. I'm just Jackie says cool. Eden Claire says cool. Sir boy is definitely jazz, bro. Hooks Rub says jazz just because we can make up a cool handshake and he'd always take the fall for me and get tossed out the door. Pot Potstalgic says Waldo. His cousin is a member of Shy. I remember that episode. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Let's see. Flash Finley 17 says, Ed, I am tan yet. Did I say that tonight? Tanya T. Oh. Tanya T. <laughs> I am Tanya T <laughs> says Boke. <laughs> see, man, when they put all these letters together, I just start putting <laughs> making stuff. <laughs> I am Tanya T. It's that makes cool. that makes more sense. I am Tanya T. That's says, what I thought okay. the first time I read it. First time I read it, I thought it said Tanya, and I was like, uh, whoa, Tanya, Tanya T. Tanya All right, T. cool. Yo, thank you guys for the comments. So, wow. Jay, who do you keep in this dumb friend I, list? I honestly don't know, man. All of them got decent qualities. Mm-hmm. Ed is pretty loyal friend. Bullethead as well. Jazz, he like they were saying, Jazz got all the connects, man, and he's uh he's pretty cool. I mean, Waldo, <laughs> what more can I say about Waldo? I mean, he's uh <laughs> he's something else. <laughs> Junior, yeah, right. Junior has his his cool qualities. Uh, Cole, I mean, Cole was cool as well, man. I don't know, this is a tough one. I. It's like I—I I, I tell you what, I'll go with Junior, mm-hmm. just because he has a fine ass older sister. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's pretty dope. On the sh- yeah, and yeah, man, that's he just seems choice. like a it seems like a pretty good, cool house to hang out at with, hang out at if I was that age, you know, at yeah. that age. I don't know who would you go with. Well. uh if you know, um, you know, if you, if, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I, I think I definitely, um, you know, definitely would go with jazz, uh, you know, just because, you know, the handshake, man, you know, the, the, he's the only one who had a cool handshake. And back in the day, I used to, you know, I used to do some crazy handshakes, uh, you know, with friends and, uh, you know, with some family members. I, my dad taught me the whole, you know, give me five on the black side. <laughs> You know, all, all kind of, you know, cut the cheese, all this other stuff. So, yeah, so I would definitely go with jazz first. Um, my second would definitely be Waldo because he, you know, he's like, he, he would just, he would always, he would always do whatever for you. He's always, he would always follow, you know, your, your lead. And if you needed somebody to, you know, if you needed somebody in your corner, he seemed like he would always be there. Him and Cole, um, you know, so yeah, jazz would be my num- my number one. But here's a crazy um, thing: jazz, not jazz. Uh, Waldo actually started out as a bully. Did you remember that? No, I don't. It was one of those episodes where him and another guy were together, and they were bullying. I think they were bullying Urkel. Urkel. Uh-huh. I think uh, I could be wrong, but I know they were like start out as a bully. He wasn't initially 
Eddie's friend. Yeah. In the beginning. So I, I just thought that was just a, a nice little nice That's little funny. tidbit to throw in there. So but That's yeah. funny, funny, funny. That's pretty dope. I didn't I didn't know that. That's cool. It was well, early, yeah, he early was show, so yeah. yeah, he was he was still funny. All these guys are funny. Even though I'm gonna tell you what, which I told you earlier this week, I didn't really know who Junior was uh, until you know you sort of told me what show he came from, and you know I, my wife and kids, you know, originally started and ran, uh, you know, at its at its most popular time frame mm-hmm. when I was working nights, and so I really didn't have like a nighttime like sitcom. Um, you know, weekly sitcom routine, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. so I, I sort of missed that one. Um, you know, sadly, cause it does sound, does sound like it was funny. And I know my wife and kids are a funny show. I just missed it, man. So, so it makes me sad, but you know, shout out to junior for making the list and also for getting the one vote, uh, on this the one, one for, I, I, so there's a couple people who said, you know, here's my first and here's my second. So I just really took the first. So of all, Jazz got the most. 12 yeah, folks. Yeah. Cole was next with four. Then Waldo and Ed tied with three. Bullethead and Junior had one each. Um, and then uh, there was that one in Arabic, which I don't really understand. So I just put it as a question mark. So, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's not going to tip the scale anywhere. But yeah, y'all, thanks for that. Uh, you know, we'll have another one's got to go or stay this week sometime. Maybe it'll be. You know, a reprise of uh, the pumpkin pie versus sweet potato pie. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, uh, Thanksgiving food. I don't know what it is. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, yeah. let's do the Thanksgiving food. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So uh, on to the voicemails, which is, you know, uh, sometimes turn into the Kayla Stevenson voicemail hour. Uh, and we definitely appreciate that. We definitely. thank her for that. So, Jay, why don't you go ahead and tell the people uh, where they can leave us a voicemail, and we'll play a few of these. All right. You can leave us a voicemail, 3853-BLAKPC. That's 3853252572. Call us, and we'll play your voicemail on the show. So let's get into it. Yes, indeed. Here we go. Please tell me, y'all, uh, y'all need to check out this, this series called Greenleaf is based in about a Memphis church. Just go check it out. And also, uh, Tales from the Hood oh. 2 was so straight. Do, do. Uh, I'm about to go in between the trees now. I'm headed home, so uh, I'll talk to y'all later. Have you seen Greenleaf? I have not. I don't even think I've I heard not, it. I've not heard of it. It sounds familiar, but I, I can't 100% for sure say I have. I have to see if I can check it out. And yeah, it's so funny because she said, Tales from the Hood is too a straight doo doo. And then she says she's about to go between some trees. Like she <laughs> That's what I thought too. I was so like, I was wait, thinking, what? <laughs> but no, did you, uh, did you even watch Tales from the Hood? Too? Uh, I watched like the first, it's up on Netflix? first couple segments of uh, Tales from the Hood. It's up on Netflix and I, I couldn't get through it, man. It was, it was something bad. Was I didn't horrible. even, I didn't even start it because I knew. Because I was like, wait a second. I know that I, there was no old school Tales from the Hood 2. So what uh-huh. is this? No, no, no. I'm not going to watch it because I know it's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. And the yeah. funny thing was, like, before it even came out, I was thinking, why hadn't anybody made a Tales from the Hood 2? You know? Mm-hmm. And then I started look, checking around and I was like, oh, they got a Tales from the Hood 2 on Netflix. Let me check it out. And then I saw, oh, Keith David is in here. So I like Keith David. He has a, you know, he's a dope actor, but then I started watching and I was like, uh, no. <laughs> pass. <laughs> yeah, it was a hard Next. pass. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, no, I wasn't even going to entertain. So here we go. Next voicemail. Three, two, one. Oh, y'all. Let me tell y'all about my other part-time job with Amazon Prime Flex. I don't think being a job is going to make it. Y'all, they sent me to South Haven and Olive Branch, Mississippi. Not sure if you know, but I got several friends that have been arrested in Mississippi for uh, imaginary stuff. If you know what I'm saying, Trump supporters. Um, So they sent me to this beautiful, rich neighborhood. I mean, the houses were beautiful. I mean, beautiful. And the white people... So you pull up, you have an app, 
where you pull off to the address and if you scan the Amazon Prime package and you take it up to their door, you ring the doorbell, you give it to them, and you can see them looking at me in the window, the shadow. And I will say, uh, Amazon Prime, because you know, I don't want to get shot. And I had 47 deliveries in this neighborhood. And I had one lady stop me and was like, hey, what's going on? I said, ma'am, I just left your Amazon big box on your porch. Nobody would come to the door. Oh, okay. Oh, you, you work for Amazon? I was like, yeah, we, uh, yeah, you, you got to see people like me. You know, whatever. she says, well, you don't have anything on your car. I said, I didn't know I needed anything. So uh, I didn't go. I didn't accept any more hours. Fuck that. Then it got dark and I got scared. Mm -hmm. I don't need to get shot. Mm -hmm. I don't need to get shot. Well, not that kind of shot. Uh, I'll talk to y'all later. Wow. Yeah, so... So I guess Amazon Prime Flex is like... Uh, isn't it sort of like a DoorDash? Sort of like a like an Uber for Amazon packages? Isn't that what that is? Uh, I'm not sure, but... I know they do it at my house. Like if I got Amazon Prime, uh, mm -hmm. and they do like same day delivery. I, I I've seen like somebody pull up in like just a little pickup truck mm -hmm. and run to the door, ring the doorbell, and leave my package on the the step. I didn't have to sign for it or anything, but yeah, yeah, that's what I'm assuming it is. It's similar to that. See, that's the <clears throat> that's the the cool and also uh, uh, you know just sort of. I don't know, hairy thing about Amazon Prime and DoorDash. Uh, you know, some of these apps where, you know, they're doing certain deliveries and stuff like that because you don't, you know, like, like if you see, if you have Uber or if you, if you see Uber or Lyft, they have a sticker in their window or they have like a light on their dashboard or something like that. Excuse me, that notes, that denotes that, you know, who they are, where they're from. Uh, even DoorDash, uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, Uber, um, Lyft and DoorDash, I think all three of those two have a thing where you could track where your driver is. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so if you do like look down at your app, you can see that your driver's nearby or your driver will send you a message and say, Hey, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, you know, that type of thing. Uh, and, and I'm not a hundred percent sure how this Amazon, you know, prime flex thing works, but you know, you just have people similar thing, you know, in their own car. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, showing up with a box, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, dropping off at your door. And then nowadays with all like the mail bombs and all, you know, the stuff that they got going on, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of a weird situation. Cause you're like, who is this random person that showed up and dropped a box at my door? You know? No. Yeah. Um, now if you have, you know, if you have the notifications on your phone where they'll just pop up and say your Amazon package has arrived, then that's one thing. Cause you can sort of get that you know what i'm saying but still it it makes it sort of hairy so i don't blame uh i don't blame kayla for uh you know go ahead and shutting it down for the night um and getting up out of mississippi which you know you're from louisiana you know my dad is from mississippi so i've heard the yeah. stories um you know it, going back years and even still today you know you don't want to be uh you know in a place where you could be seen as somebody who don't belong there you know what i'm saying yeah. Um, uh, even if you even if you own a house there, so yeah, I, I remember uh, when I used to go to Houston by myself, like just going either mm -hmm. with friends or just uh probably just going visit. I remember there's times I went to just stay at your mom's house for like the weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like never stop invited to Texas. Never stop invited to Texas. Oh, man, just yeah, go no. straight through. You got to get some know. gas. Just go straight through. Try to try to make it to the next stop. Yeah. So. So it's crazy. Go to man. Orange or Beaumont or go all. If you're going back east, go to Lake Charles. Don't stop in Vida. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's. That's I true. wonder if it's still like that today. Do people still still talk about it like that? I'm sure there's. I'm sure it's still like you know some some legacy carryover from that. Right. Uh, even though I know they. I know those years ago. I remember years ago when they were talking about like they wanted to integrate Vida. So it was like the first black family. Or, you know, the first few families like, you know, that were black and mm -hmm. and Latino or Asian, something like that, that they that they uh, that moved there. And I'm sure they had to pay these people a lot of money right. to move there. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. But yeah, yeah I'm curious. It's to crazy, know. Man. Yeah. B Rob, let us know. I know you travel back and forth to Lake Charles, mm -hmm. Houston. Let he us definitely know. Knows. He definitely knows. All right. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah.
I'm not even giving my name. Y'all know who this is. Look, I think it's neat that y'all do the little thing about choose one, one must go. Okay, so let's do um TV Mama. You got Claire Huxtable, mm. okay. uh, Florida Evans, mm. Weezy, Jefferson, yep. and... Fresh Prince Mama. Florida Evan, Claire Huxtable, Florida Evan, <laughs> Weezy Jefferson, <laughs> and the mama from Fresh Prince. There you go. The first mama. Which one of them have to go? Ooh. I said Claire Huxtable because that was just, I, I love Claire. She was real, but she was, it was just kind of like too unreal. And then I said, we need to keep Florida ever. But then everybody told me that Florida was a hater. I mean, they really dogged me out today. They told me that when James wanted to go uh, hustle and shoot some pool, Florida told him no. And they was like, she was a hater. She wouldn't let James be himself. And I was like, what? And then they said they had a black Jesus. And then when James died, she married that atheist guy. I was like, oh my God. Okay, then. That's all I have to tell y'all. I'm uh, just getting in for work. I've been hustling. So I take multiple streams and cars. There you go. Okay, then. Bye. Man, wow. Shout out to that. That'll be it. Yeah, shout out to that. That'll be actually a good uh, one's got to go. Or one's got to stay. Either way, man. Uh, But yeah, so between those four. Who do you pick to to to, to go? go to go? Uh, Weezy, <clears throat> yeah, Weezy got to go. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, to this day, I still don't know what Weezy did. <laughs> she, she didn't do nothing, man. She, she just lived in that that, that what do they call it, that penthouse in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> George did. George did everything. What did Weezy do? Let's see here. Uh, I fr- I thought was she a servant? No, um, we. I don't think so. No, because they had money. Yeah, I guess you're right. Um, let's see here. They actually had a servant. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. They had Thelma, right? No, no. no. Her Thelma, name was. No, what was her uh, name? Uh, yeah. Any other day, I'd remember this. Except for. Oh, I know what it is too. Oh man. Oh, I can't remember now. She been in so many movies since then. Crap. She was on. Uh, she was on two two seven. Yep. She was on some other good, good movies. Some, I think she was in a Master P movie. She was like the mom in a Master P movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, crap. I'm okay, drawing. Florence. Florence. There you go, Florence. Uh, there wait. You go. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, I'm, yeah, but I'd I'm have to get rid now, of Weezy. I can't. I'm mad now because I can't truly remember, but I think that's right. Isn't it Florence? It's Florence. Uh, I can't. I, uh, either way. Yeah, she played Florence some. Johnson, Marla Gibbs. There you go. I would say somebody out there going to smack us to reality and tell us the right name. Yeah. Um, My bad, peoples. Our bad. What did Isabel... What was it? Uh, Isabel Sanford. Yeah, what did she actually do, though? Like, what? Did, what was her job? Right. She's just a stay-at-home wife. Yeah. Because George like ran all the cleaners. Yeah, George ran all the cleaners. Yeah, they, they was in a, a deluxe apartment in the sky. <laughs> A.K.A. a penthouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it, man. That's yeah, she, that's, she, she, she that's did that. Yeah, so she got to go, man. I would love to have... have uh, uh, Miss Miss Huxtable as my my mother. I mean, if I had to choose one, you know, mm-hmm. you got a, a a woman who's a a lawyer and a professor. Mm-hmm. Um, I never saw her yell at the kids. For one, she always mm-hmm. talked to them respectable. I mean, it was like completely opposite of how my parents were. You yeah. know, so I guess that was like the great yeah, no. thing about the Cosby Show back in the day is like. They got this positive twist on the black family that we, mm-hmm. you know, that we we never got to see. So, 
Florida Evans. Shoot, I, I thought she was like the 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 quintessential black mother. Every black mama mm-hmm. was like that. True. Yep. So true. True. And then of course Who you got you got Aunt, uh, Viv, yeah. Aunt Viv, the original the OG Aunt Viv, man. She she was like actually like a combination of both of them. So she was a professor. Wait, was she a professor mm-hmm. too? So she was a professor, a uh, professional, but then she still kind of had that hood in her, like uh, yeah, like like Miss Evans. So she could bring it out when it was needed. When you know, it was she, needed, yep. She, she ain't let Beverly Hills change her that much. Nah, nope. <laughs> um. So yeah. So all right, cool. So you dropping you dropping Florida. Yeah, by Florida. You dropping a uh, by Weezy. You dropping Weezy. Yep. Uh, man. Okay. So wow. I mean, I watched all I watched all four of those shows extensively, yeah. every episode, and um, I if okay. So if we talk a new school Aunt Viv, like replacement Aunt Viv, uh-huh. you know, substitute Aunt Viv, she, she got to go uh, between those four. If it's substitute Aunt Viv, um, if it's first Aunt Viv, OG Aunt Viv, ooh, that's a tough choice. Um, I would also say Wheezy with your same with your same uh, you know with your same. Um, uh, 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 you know, it's your same reasoning. It mm-hmm. just makes sense. Yeah. Um, you know, the other ladies, I guess I don't know. I don't really know what Florida Evans did, uh, but she seemed like, you know, she seemed like, you know, she would slap the taste out your mouth, you know what I'm saying? And prevent you from doing something stupid, even though you would go and do it anyway, JJ. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I'd have to, I'd have to drop Weezy. Claire Huxtable. Claire Huxable reminded me too much of my own mom, you know, just from like skin tone, uh, just from, you know, the way that she talked, she seemed like a young professional, but, uh, uh, you know, she always spoke respectfully to to people outside. Uh, but you know, she still had a little bit of that fire in her, uh, you know, when needed and which also sort of, also sort of carries over to OG and Viv, uh, and, um, and Wheezy. So yeah, yeah. So Claire's got to stay, but yeah. Um, bye Wheezy. Dang it, man. I'm in Florida Evans about we see that you know. what we have to do oh, a, that's a good one yeah a black daddy edition TV Man, daddy we, edition we, we probably should yeah, we should Fr- post both of those I think both Fred of those Sanford mm. uh, to see Uncle Phil Uncle Phil yes should we even put in Cosby <laughs> I mean hey you know <laughs> it's TV dad TV it, dad it's TV dad Bill uh, Cosby uh, Carl Winslow. Oh, Carl Winslow. You got George Jefferson too. George but, Jefferson, or you got James. Yeah. George Jefferson, though, but like, I don't he, know. I, I never saw him as a TV day. Uh, yeah, I never saw him that, that we. So we could take him out. Yeah. Yeah, so we could definitely go with uh, <laughs> with uh, James, though. Ja- um, oh, yeah, definitely James. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want James as my daddy. He, he, no. He's a little too tough, man. That belt. <laughs> See that belt coming with the fire behind it. Uh, some yeah, smoke oh, flying man. behind. Don't it. don't even because I was about I was about to say he kind of remind me of your pops mm-hmm. with, that, with that belt. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, that that would be those actually be two good, you know, TV dad ones. Um, I was trying to think if there's anybody we could replace Bill Cosby with though. Huh. Uh, We'd have to think on that. It'll be a while. Yeah, we definitely have to think of that. Um, but no, that was a that was a good that was a good uh, one's gotta one's gotta go. Um, mm-hmm. I definitely he- want to hear what the other people what the people out there said. You know, and it's funny how you know John Witherspoon uh, from the Wayans Brothers. Oh, that would be a good one. He would be a good one. That that would be a good one right there. Yeah, that'd be a good option. All right. Damon um, Wayans from uh, My Wife and Kids. My Wife and Kids. Yeah, yeah. That's true too. There, you know, there's actually I'm looking at this, and there's a lot of black TV dads that we just don't even oh, yeah. think about. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, if you go on BuzzFeed, if you go on BuzzFeed, there's a uh, there's a uh, you know a quintessential list of uh, you know the top twenty black TV dads. Wow. So there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot out there, so cool. Whatever, but right. yeah, man. Steve Harvey was in that mix, wasn't he? Wasn't he Steve doing? Harvey, Bernie Mac, mm-hmm. Bernie Mac show, Terry Crews. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. 
Alright, cool. Here we go. Next one up. Yeah, I got a confession. I don't know if it's a confession. I don't know. But have y'all ever walked in on somebody uh, naked? Like a relative. Yes. Like one time I went over to my parents. And uh, I told my dad, I, I said, I'm, I'm, hello, yeah. And I opened my daddy's door to his bedroom because her mama got different. Yeah, they don't sleep in the same room. Yeah. And they, yeah, with their ass. And so he was naked. He was just coming out the shower and he said, girl. And I said, oh. And it was awful. It was terrible. I've never looked at my father the same again. <laughs> it just so every time I see my dad I snicker I just kind of laughing I know that's wrong but yeah that's my confession I, yeah it was weird yeah and I looked at my mama weird cause I looked at my daddy cause I didn't see my daddy too so he like I don't know why you're looking at my goodies Cause one day you may have to help me change clothes mm. and get out of here looking at my goodies. You gotta be ashamed of yourself busting in my room. Yeah. Okay then. That's my confession. <laughs> Good night. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for that confession. Uh, yeah. We'll just we'll just put that as the confessions part of the show. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That is crazy. All right. Well, have you uh, ever accidentally walked in on a relative? Uh, yeah. You know, when they're getting yeah. dressed or something else. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Expound. God, <laughs> you making me re you, you making you me relive to. this. It's like <laughs> back when we were little, uh, mm-hmm. we were real young. I ended up walking in on our grandmother. Oh no! Naked. Oh no! I was like, oh, oh my gosh, she got four <laughs> arms. <laughs> and she got two thumbs sticking out the too. ones in the middle. Oh, I've done that before too. Huh? My mom. Wow. Oh, yeah. and I was like, That's oh bad. my gosh, she had two thumbs sticking out the one in the middle. Yeah. That's nasty. That was bad. I, I yeah. And I was like, what is all that black fur down there? Anyway. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, Grandma. I mean, I'm sorry, my mom. I ain't. Yeah. I mean, uh, that was other other relatives too. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like I was at. I got home early from co- you know school one day. This was back when I was in college. And I guess my dad was in the shower while I got home, and he must have mm-hmm. heard something. And he came out the shower, and there he is, butt naked. I'm like, oh crap. I didn't mean mm. to see that, but it's my dad. My kids see me naked, so yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. Interesting. What about you? Well, same with our grandmother. I mean, I my parents were you know pretty pretty open when we were kids. So like mm-hmm. we you know they they walked around without clothes yeah. on, mainly in their room, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, or like shower or something like that, you know, so, right. so them for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think of somebody else, um, outside of our grandmother. Um, I mean, my grandfather on my dad's side, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just because he got to a point in his age where he had to be, you know, he had, he had to have help, uh, you know, being bathed. So I've seen that it was not pretty either, but you know, and sorry to him for that, but yeah, man, it's uh, yeah, it's just not the not a good thing, you know, when you accidentally jump on walk in the room and you don't expect to see what you see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you just don't want to don't want to see that. It's not the thing that you want to see. The ultimate question for people out there is: Have you ever walked in on your parents having sex? Mm. We'll leave that for another show. Yeah, uh, not a good thing. Mm-mm-mm. That's not a good thing. Nope. <laughs> not a good thing at all. Let's see. Wow. All right. So, thanks for that, Memphis Diva. And yeah, remember to guard your eyes. Here's the last one. <laughs> Hashtag Black Diva Nation. Hashtag Black Diva Nation. Hashtag Black Diva Nation. 
gonna tell you who I am because you already know. But y'all, let me tell y'all about um, working for Amazon Flex. You know, Amazon Prime. I work for Amazon Prime, and what I do, I go to the warehouse here in Memphis. They build some warehouses, and I go and I get orders and I deliver them. Well, they send me to Germantown, but you have to Google Google Germantown, Tennessee. But anyway, so they send me to like a rich part of Germantown, like rich big ass houses. They ain't got no lights on. It's dark outside. It's like 7 o'clock, you know, daytime changing system. And I can't see. So, y'all, I'm going to have to change and just do it on the weekend during the day so I can see. Because I had a flashlight. Well, anyway, so I have a flashlight. And I'm running to house to house. People are like, who are you? I'm like, Amazon Prime. They peeping out the windows and stuff. But anyway, so I get to this townhouse. And it has like one little road. And I, I have to turn around to get out. You have to either go into somebody's garage and back up, or you just have to back up and just know how to maneuver your car. So as I go to the back, it dead ends, and it's all these people's garages. So I turn, and this man scares me, and he is sitting in his garage. So I got to drive up to him and reverse, so he looks at me and says, Stop! So I, I raise the window down, and I'm like, fuck you, too. <laughs> and then he goes, uh, what are you doing? I said, fool, I work for Amazon Prime. You see this badge? Ain't nobody trying to do nothing to you. Ain't nobody trying to rob your ass. But it was the night of the, you know, the, the voting, the last night of, oh, you know, all that crap. And then I heard him got the hell on down. Because I was like, either he can, he can shoot me and say I was trespassing, or oh, he going to call the police. a bunch of foolish I, I don't know it, it, it always it always like bewilders me how Kayla always gets in these situations mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> she always gets in these situations but man yeah you gotta you got to be wary of your of your surroundings and yeah you can't just talk to anybody like that especially on one of those nights when they be galvanized you know what I'm saying right um yeah and yeah, Germantown is what southeast Memphis, a little tiny, you know, suburb, if you will, suburb town. Olive Branch is just south of Memphis, you know, just on the other side of the border, you know, a place she was talking about earlier. Yeah, it's you you can't just be out there yelling at people, Memphis Diva. You know, you don't wanna you don't wanna be in trouble out there. No. Uh even though, yeah, man, you have every right to be there, obviously, you know, working for Amazon. But like I said, man, you Amazon need to send y'all like I don't know. They need to send y'all like an Amazon Prime Flex, like a uh, 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 car magnet or something like that. Something that's big on the side of your car, right. where if you pull exactly. up, people can see you know what you are. Put one in the side, one on each side, and one in the back, just depending on where you park it. Or maybe like a sticker in your window, something, or, or like the light up box, like that that Uber and Lyft have, or something, you know, because you know it's. It's just not safe for people out there, especially if they're going to be delivering, you know, in the evening. Um, it's not going to be safe for people like that. Um, yeah, and Amazon's actually building a, a um, they're building a facility here, one of their oh, warehouses nice. here, uh, distribution center. So it's going to be, you know, half an hour north of where I live right now at the, by the airport. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we had, you know, a similar situation, uh, yeah. you know, with Amazon Flex people delivering stuff. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Cool. Um, I saw somebody. I saw somebody, a DoorDash person, uh, you know, going to try to find uh, a house to deliver some food here one time. And the way the home, the way the homes in my neighborhood are, you know, you have like an alleyway in the back where your garages are, and it's just like a driveway that connects all the garages. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, or I guess all the all the driveways. Uh, there's a long road that connects all the garage, uh, the, the driveways to your garage. And then those roads, you know, go back to the main road. Uh, and normally, you know, nobody really drives back there unless you live there. Uh, and then the occasional like UPS or FedEx person will go and deliver something back there because they think that's your front, the front of your house when in right. actuality, the front of your house is on the opposite side. So I remember, you know, working in the yard in the back one time and seeing this lady you know, pull up like in a little Prius and I hadn't seen her before. I thought she may have been a new neighbor or something like that. Um, but yeah, she was like creeping, 
She pulled down one way, then she backed up and turned around and came back the other way past my house. And she pulled down and then she stopped and back up a little bit more uh, toward one of the houses that's sort of catty corner behind me. And and I looked and I was like, who is that? And she sort of like waved and I was like, I don't know who you are. Uh, and then I saw the garage door open at the house. So I was like, How, when did she move into that house? Uh, and then the lady who lived in that home, uh, you know, who had just had a baby um, not long, you know, not long before that, walked out and, and got some food from her. But there was no, like, signs of demarcation, like nothing on her car that said DoorDash, other than when she whipped out the big red bag. So, so I don't know, man. Uh, you got to keep these people safe, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Don't want to put these people in any bad situations. So, there you go. Wow. Well, yeah, Memphis Diva, thanks for the voicemails. Definitely, definitely appreciate it. Mm. Guys. If you've listened this far, congratulations to you. And thank you. Really more thank you to you more than congratulations. But yeah, if you listen this far, got a special treat for you. Uh, we got one more 25% off PlayStation Store code for you to download the latest games and add-ons, watch movies and more from your PS4 system. It expires January 31st, 2019. So guess what, y'all? Guess what? It's still available. Still available. So all you got to do is when you get to this point on the show, uh, shoot us a text if you know our our actual phone numbers. Thanks, B-Rob. Uh, or, um, or uh, you know, send us a DM, really. Send us a DM on Instagram, on Twitter, one of those things, uh, and say, hey, I need that code. Give me that code, PlayStation code, whatever it is, uh, and we'll send it to you. Um, yeah. 25% off. You just drop this code in the PlayStation Store. Get yourself games, add-ons, movies, whatever you want under the select items that they have available from the PS4 Store. All right. That's it. Dope. Oh, yeah. We're not being sponsored by PlayStation at all, even though that would be pretty dope if we did, if we were. So, PlayStation, listen up. Sponsor us. Thanks. All right, people, we're going to jump into a topic that we, we chit-chatted about a little bit uh, through text message earlier this week. And it's, who are some of the mm-hmm. biggest disappointments in, in rap history? Uh, I guess label mates or people or groups who we know or knew were dope, but just never hit it big time. So, uh, yeah, what, what do you think, Jared? What, what, what's on your mind with this topic? I mean, I was just, I was just thinking, you know, to myself, cause I heard, um, I think it was a three drunken night show. They were talking about, uh, you know, some people who, you know, a couple of people who you never heard of, mm-hmm. you know, from, from certain labels like, uh, or, or you, you've heard of and you know that are dope and, you know, they just never, you know, quite blew up like you thought they would like snow the product. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, true. Where is she, man? I, she, I, she, I think she's a dope rapper, and I know she's still out there. I know she's still, oh, you know, releasing music. Yeah, but yeah. she just went independent. I think. I think that she's. Oh, yeah, she, that's good her, for her, her label didn't know what um, to do with her, so that's the perfect move. Was she under Royce or was she under Tech? No, she she wasn't under Before. either one of them. She was. Uh, no, I think she was she's signed to Atlantic. Man. I think, if I'm not mistaken, or oh, okay. Sony, one of those, one of the bigger labels, but. You know, oh, she did okay. a lot of collaborations with uh with Tech Nine and and whatnot. And he said he actually would so have signed her. Was tech, so. You know, if she was independent at the time, he was thinking of signing her. But you know, she's she's good being independent as is because she already mm-hmm. has a like a strong cult following and has her yeah. own mer- merchandise and game. So she she's better off doing it solo. Yeah, she's one of those people though that I think of that I'm like she is. Eons better than Bad Baby, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I wouldn't even and put them in the same. You know, I wouldn't even put them in the she, same sentence. <laughs> you know, she, she should be out here. You know, she should be out here. You know, getting the same love that Cardi B and Nicki Minaj is getting. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just because of the content yeah. uh, that she could put out, but for some reason, you know, she's just not out there. I mean, I know that. Um, you know, I know that uh, what's his name, uh, Joe Budden. You know, has extensively talked about you know the fall of Slaughterhouse, mm-hmm. and you know he was sort of behind that. But you know, it's just one of those things. Uh, you know, Crooked Eye, Joel Ortiz, you know, sort of faded into the background. 
you know, you don't really hear from those guys, but they were all under shady records. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, this is just, there's just, there's just, uh, you know, there's just quite a few people. If you look at like Grand Hustle Records, you know, with T.I., mm-hmm. uh, you know, runs um, pretty much you got T.I. and B.O.B. Um, you got Trey the Truth, uh, you know, which is finally getting some, you know, getting some, uh, you know, play, but he really hasn't blown up like he should. Uh, you got Travis Scott, mm-hmm. you know, who is probably, you know, one of the, the, the most popular one out right now next to T.I. Uh, but then you have, you know, some other people who you have barely heard from uh, or heard of, you know, like I said, Trey the Truth, uh, you know, like... Tokyo Jet, like C-Rod. So there's, there's a lot of people, man. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, who you who have either been signed with those record labels for a long time, okay. uh, and you know, you're like, all right, I can't wait. I'm glad you guys. I'm glad you signed with them. Uh, you know, I can't wait until you blow up and you just never hear from them yeah. again. Um, yeah. Or you know, you rarely hear from them. Or uh, what is that? Um, the girl who signed by uh, Good Music by Kanye's label. Um, what is it? Uh, 707 or 070 Shake? I can't remember. Oh, her. I finally heard from her. Yeah, I think she just yeah. started popping like earlier this year, maybe last year sometime. Yeah, yeah, because of, because of Kanye's, uh, you know, because of Kanye's Montana album or whatever that was. So, yeah, man. So, so Daytona. What, you, man? what do you think? I... <laughs> Daytona. <laughs> what is it? Daytona. Well, she was on Daytona, but then she was also on Kanye's album, too. <laughs> you should say Kanye's uh, Montana on... album. I was like, what? No, 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 no. She was on Pusha T's Daytona. Yeah, but you say Kanye's Mon- Kanye. You say Kanye's Montana album. <laughs> that's how it came. No, 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 no. That's how it came Kanye, out your mouth. Kanye. Kanye didn't do my. He he did it. He did. Didn't he do that album release in Montana? Yeah, but you say the. Oh, okay. I. Oh, that Wyoming. That's Wyoming. Wyoming. I, I, bad, I thought Wyoming. you was talking about Daytona, but you said Montana. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nah, I just, I just, the words didn't come okay. out the right. All right, yeah, but, I hear what you're saying. Though. You know I got what, I mean. what you mean. I got what you mean. She was on, <laughs> she was on the album that he released way out in the middle of nowhere. How's that sound? That sounds great. So, Perfect. there you go. Yeah. So, I mean, what, uh, what do you man. think? What, who are, who are some people that you well, would think of? I know you have a much deeper uh, knowledge of. There's, you know, there's like uh, two people that come to mind that really, I guess, were a disappointment. First one mm-hmm. is Corey Guns. He, I think he made the the horrible mistake of signing the to Cash Money Young Money back when he did. Didn't release. Mm-hmm. I think the only thing that we everybody probably knows him for is a um, uh, six foot. What is that six six foot seven foot? What was that that song uh, Lil Wayne had? Six foot seven foot. Uh, I forgot the actual name of it but anyway he had like the last verse on there and that's what uh, Mm -hmm. everybody kind of knows him for but he didn't drop an album didn't drop anything he was just signed to them for like the longest time didn't do anything and he was like I thought he was like primed to be one of the best because he was dope he was so dope back in the day Yeah. Um, I think nowadays he has like little he drops a song here and there like his dad Peter Guns uh he said Corey is just plain lazy I don't I don't know the validity of that but you know that came out of his dad's mouth but he's real dope second yeah. second person uh J Electronica uh mm-hmm. I mean the dude is amazing Apparently he his album was done, but he says he wants to scrap it because you know it's just not val you know it's just not up to date you know with the time. So mm-hmm. those are the two that come to mind. But of course, there's like a lot of the people like I really love uh, the group Sess Crew. They're on Tech Nine Strange label, Strange Music label. I mean, of course, being an independent mm-hmm. label, you're not gonna you're not gonna see them with uh or hear any radio play or anything like that from them. I thought they were both dope. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean they have their core their core fans and they release good music and all that, but I just don't think you're gonna see them on a, a huge getting like super big like any of these other duos. You know, uh let yeah. me think who who else? Who else? Uh 
those are those are like the three that actually come to mind. But there's Rhapsody. Rap. I mean, Rhapsody, Rhapsody is cool, but Rhapsody got her. She got a. Or she was nominated for a, a Grammy, or maybe she won the Grammy. Mm-hmm. She may have won the Grammy or got the Grammy, but so she's. <clears throat> I can't remember. She has some notoriety, but I don't think it's like her name is as big as it should be. You know, getting a Grammy is kind of like uh, it, it's there and it has some claim to fame. But if the people don't know you, I guess they just don't know you, you know. But oh, she's yeah, a lot better true. than than a Nikki and a Cardi, just in my opinion. Uh, I guess she just doesn't put herself out there with, uh, you know, foolishness. Or anything like that. So, but there's a lot of women, a lot of female rappers that that could be really dope. Like I really enjoy uh, Lady Lashur. I think she's out of the UK. She's really dope. I like her music. Um, of course, Sir Rock the MC. I love her her stuff. Uh, you know, Snow the Product, as we mentioned. There, there's quite mm-hmm. a few. It's quite a few women out there that are doing really good music, but they're just not selling. Though they don't have that super sex appeal that most men kind of gravitate towards, or most women gravitate towards. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's it's a lot, man. There's quite a few people out there. Mm, let me think. Yeah, let me think. Let me think. I don't know. Those are the ones that, that actually come to mind. Yeah. Yeah, I just think about that. I think about, you know, you think about like, um, think about record labels where they have one like iconic, um, you know, leader or one iconic, you know, rapper uh, that is that is the one who started it, musician, whatever, the one that started it. Uh, and then they, you know, started adding talent. And, mm-hmm. you know, every now and then they have somebody who blows up like, if you look at Rock Nation, right? Uh, right. You know. Uh, you know, who is uh, Jay-Z, Jay-Z founded, right? Uh, you know, you have people, you know, obviously you have Jay-Z, you know, the most iconic of them all on his label. Um, then you have J. Cole, uh, you know, right. you have uh, Rihanna, you know, all well-known. Um, you know, you have some people who are lesser well-known, or I guess it's lesser known that they're on the label, but they actually happen to be on the label like Mariah Carey and Shakira. Yeah. They're under rap niche, uh, under rock really? niche. Right. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know those people, but you really don't. You know, you're like, oh, really? They're under there, right? I did not. Uh, but then you think of people like Vic Mensa, you know, who are sort of, who are sort of one of those names who are more known than underground, mm-hmm. you know. But they're still a rhapsody, you know, who's more known than than just being totally underground. But but it's still they they haven't they haven't truly hit the mainstream in the way that they really should. Um, uh, you know, Jaden Smith is also under under his label. Yeah, it's just random. Like you didn't. Yeah, I, I think the music. Um, but then you have. Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, uh, you know, you just have people like that who who, uh, <clears throat> you know, who you definitely want to hear from. You want to hear from more uh, because you know they're dope. They had to be signed to that label for some reason. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, uh, but for some room, uh, you know, sorry for some reason, uh, you know, and, and maybe it's the thing where. You know, they just can't put together, uh, uh, you know, a string of songs to make an EP or an LP. Um, you know, maybe there's maybe they're pushing one person more than the other or one group more than the other. Right. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things. And, you know, there, there's guys like like Lil Wayne, you know, who was pushed by Birdman, uh, you know, uh, to be. The next, you know, to be like the best thing or to be one of the next best things. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, he's hit and he's moved on and done his own thing, Uh, um, uh, his own label. But, you know, yet and still, there's other people who are still missing out there who you just want to know. Like if you if you think about cash money, right? Right. I know. Or not cash money. I'm sorry. Not cash money. I'm sorry. Um, um, No Limit Records. Oh, Lord. I was just about to mention Your favorite record label of all time, I think. It. it, I think your favorite record label of all time. Back in the day, yeah. Master P is definitely on my my list of people I, I would love to meet. Uh, definitely yeah. inspirational on my inspirational list of people, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, No Limit back in the day was every everything for me only because it was like the biggest thing out of Louisiana. It was like like I said before, it was like kind of like something I could call my own. Uh, 
You know, mm-hmm. we really didn't have like a ton of stuff coming out uh, as far as like talent wise. Like I, I know a lot of um, I remember Big Mike. Do you remember Big Mike? I always thought the guy oh, yeah. I always thought the yeah. guy was from Houston, but later I found out he's from New Orleans and I'm like, OK. And then recently I found yeah, out that know. I mean, I knew Pimp C had a lot of ties to Louisiana, born in Crowley, Louisiana, if I'm not mistaken. And then I just recently found out that Bun B's, both of Bun B's parents, like grew up less than twenty miles from me. So <clears throat> they're right. Yeah. What? So yeah. So it's 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 good to kind of hear that, just to say, okay, Louisiana, we do have some stuff. But then, of course, you know, the quality of music back back in the day with No Limit was kind of shoddy. I, mm-hmm. I just felt like P was just trying to help everybody get on, just to just to try to help them out maybe get out of a bad situation or something like that but yeah i could yeah. understand that but as far as like quality there was only like a handful of people on no limit that actually were really good artists and it's a shame that one of those guys is locked up mac i thought he was like the mm-hmm. best one on the label um yep mr magic he was good. he passed away uh some years ago due to a car accident I thought he was he was mm-hmm. he was getting better over time. Uh who else? There was Fiend. Fiend's still doing some stuff. And and I like his movie, but he's doing it more on the independent thing. Currency. Mm-hmm. Currency was signed to True Records. Uh I guess it's no limit true records. Kinda like what Lil Wayne had mm-hmm. with the uh, Young Money, Cash Money. Um Yeah, Currency's one of those guys that I'm thinking that you know he's he is more than he is more than underground. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he is a he's an amazing artist. He's amazing. Artist. Everything he puts out is pretty much fire. Uh, and then nobody but, works hard. You know, he no, should be. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say he should be. You know, a more mainstream, a more well known, uh, uh, you know, rapper than than um, you know than he is. Just because you know he's one of those guys that that. Uh, you know, he's one of those guys who puts in the work. He's one of those guys yeah. who always brings fire. And, you know, he's one of those guys when you listen to him, you know, you, you, uh, you know, you get some, uh, you know, you get some good, you get some good out of it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I'm just saying he should be, he should be, uh, you know, he should be more well known than he actually is. You know yeah. He should be, he should have blown up better. So, yeah. I mean, think, who knows? Maybe he will. I mean, I think he's in a good position because he has like his loyal fan base the dude puts out at least four projects a year i can't say that about nobody else the dude's worth that ethic is insane he has probably i want to say over 30 projects just in his career and and I, i'm not gonna say they they go gold or platinum or sell anything like that but he puts enough projects mm-hmm. out to where he could go do a show he knows the show is going to be sold out and that's where the majority yeah. of the people get money from, not from their label. Because I think the whole, just as an outsider looking in, I think the whole label, mainstream label thing is is overrated. Um, mm-hmm. There may be some good for that initial check. But, yeah. you know, as far as like a long term, long term money, I heard it's pretty bad. Like, I think the average rapper signed to a major label makes like 40 mm-hmm. grand a, a year yeah that's crazy is, isn't it? yeah isn't that wild yeah, that's insane like because for, for what they show and what they you know the the i don't know the the fake money that you could buy from amazon mm-hmm. or or like real money whatever they're showing off you know yeah. in in you know on stage or on social media posts compared to the reality you yeah. know they're <laughs> I, I'm like I'm like damn I, I I make more money than some of them you know what I'm saying yeah right <laughs> like, it's crazy you know or make just as much yeah. I guess it's yeah like, whatever yeah so. it's it's wild you know it's it's wild man it's definitely wild and yeah and I mean it's it's one of those things you know even even with signing with those large labels you know it's always sort of one of these deals where you know you got to do like one or two records that the label wants you to do you know that's sort of like a a more like representative of like uh you know more like cross crossover representative record or some songs on your record you know mm-hmm. and then you finally get to do your own projects you know after after you have that you know one or two yeah. or more that's the yeah, that's like a maybe done. though that's that's definitely like a maybe that's a maybe yeah. too yeah and it's got to be something that's popping enough for them to actually promote you yeah. know what i'm saying 
because if it's not then you'll never hear it um so yeah so you think of stuff like that man it's it's uh you know, it's it's interesting. It's interesting to see that and, and how much work you got to do to actually get there. And I know there's a lot of work involved and I know it's, you know, some luck involved, you know, and just, just being blessed to be able to do it at the right time. Mm-hmm. You know, you come in at the right time. Um, you know, when when Nicki Minaj and and uh, Rihanna aren't popping, you know, you come in at the right time and you steal the show and be, you know, Cardi B. <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, and then they get mad at you. <laughs> You know, because you're, you know, you're the next up and coming big thing, um, but you're just doing your thing. You know, I'm, and I'm just using her as an example. I'm not saying, mm-hmm. um, but it's, it's just one of those things. You just got to hit it at the right time or you got to or like, you know, right now, if you're an R&B artist, like you, you probably won't get heard. You, you probably uh-huh. won't get heard unless you have unless you a have a name, you know, that carries over from, you know, the big R&B time frame, like in the 90s and early 2000s. Or unless you're singing backgrounds uh, on somebody's music, or if you have a bunch of rapper features, or if you could do both, rap and rap and sing a little bit, yeah. you know, like I mean, like Drake can rap and sing a little bit. I'm not saying that he's the most lyrical. I'm not saying he's the best, but he does a little bit of both. So you know, that's one of those things. That's why, uh, and I guess Lil Wayne was sort of a rapper that tried to carry a tune too. So <laughs> you know, maybe that's why he he vibed with Drake. Um, yeah. You know, because because they do sort of that same thing, and that's the only way you're gonna get heard if you can sort of sing. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to love R&B, man. That was the thing. Yeah. Uh, and the crazy you thing know, is, I, on every date I went on, I had a little <laughs> bit of Usher playing. So, <laughs> and I think they they got a lot of singers out there. But oh yeah, but a lot. It, but I don't. I just think their content is it's not good <laughs> for lack of better words. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah, good. That's, that's one. That's one thing. Yeah, and then the other thing is like you know the other thing is there, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. But this day and age, you got to be a little more poppy. You know what I'm saying? You got to yeah, be able to, which to, is a shame. To yeah, for your song to be able to to last and to be able to hit the masses and to be able to get any spins at all, you know, you got to have some pop in there, um, so you can play on the mix stations or the pop stations. Because uh, I think that those are the more popular style stations right now. You know, where there's a mix of music. Cause, yeah. Because there's so many people who like a lot of stuff instead of like one yeah. main you yeah. know, thing. The other thing is, I don't know, man. It always just seemed like back in the day when R&B was big, you know, like it was like people had like they was going through stuff, you yeah. know, like like boys to men, like mm-hmm. they was going through stuff like Joe to see. They had to have it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like they was always hungry for, you know, they was always fiending. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, like Usher. He had, he had, you know, he was he was just like you know just always trying to be the smooth dude mm-hmm. and talk about stuff. So so you know you look at old guys like that, you know, one twelve, you know, I don't know, man. It just yeah, seemed, it's uh, a completely you know, different, just like different day and age, man. I don't know. They had their their content was so much better, it seemed so so much better. I don't know. Yeah, it's been a while yeah, since so, I've heard a, a good R and B album. I'm, I know they're out there. I know they're out there, but it's just been a, a while since yeah. I've heard a good one. I mean, we got Chris Brown right now. You know, now, Chris uh, Brown does on, a little man. bit of, I mean, a little bit of rapping, a little bit of singing. Yeah, but uh, you know uh, just a pure soul, just singing your no, well, singing no, your soul, ass off. No. no, I mean not soul singing as far as uh, but that. But I mean, just a good R and B album, kind of like we were just talking about, like like the One Twelves and the the Jodeces and stuff like that. You know, I mean. I like I say, the the I days, the days, the times have changed, and they just don't sound good. Nah, no, nah, it's, nobody is nobody is out here doing it like they did it back then. It's just it's just true, man. There's there's no one, you know. You can't think of I, I don't know. I can't think of one, man. I mean that. Like I said, I'm I know there's some, but they're just not on the level that. They're getting heard on the radio. Miguel, I don't know. Yeah. So, but it's more poppy. Yeah. Anything now is more poppy, like you say. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah. Nothing, man. But people, this is this is a, this is a question for the people out there. If y'all can think of, you know, a great R and B artist in the past, <laughs> I don't know, 10, 15 years. You know, that could sing, was like singing and like telling you a story rather than just, 
you know, doing the poppy, you know, Chris Brown stuff. I want to grind on you um, in the club. More lately. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I want to know, man. I want to know who that is. And then another thing is, you know, these people who are, you know, label mates of, you know, iconic rappers, um, you know, that you just never hear of, you never heard from. Um, uh, yeah, who are those people? Who do y'all think are some good label mates, you know, that we just haven't heard of, but we really want to know? Um, you know, we really want to know. We want to give them, like, you know, more mass appeal. We want everybody to hear them instead of, you know, just the few undergrounds that hear them. Mm-hmm. Who are those people? Who are those people? Yeah. We want to know. Wow. Uh, anyway all right cool all right cool well yeah man so uh you know this is that time where we normally do confessions but we've already gotten a confession from kayla stevenson so uh you know we do have a um we do have uh you know one little uh advice you know one little advice thing um and jay you can just sort of can you just re re retell the people where they can leave us some questions about advice and Questions confessions. and fights. Well, if you want to type out that uh, that question you you have been, you know, kind of thinking about, it's been on your mind, email us, hashtag blackoutpod at gmail.com. Or if you just want to tell us, mm-hmm. let us hear the frustration in your voice. 3853-BLAKPC or 385-325-2572. Call us and leave us those confessions. Or if you have a question, you know, Ask us. Yes, indeed. And we'll answer. Yes, indeed. So, so here we go. So this one comes from A Kermit. Hey, A Kermit. Uh, what's up? So here we go. My girlfriend gave me her phone to take a pic of her, and a text came up from some random guy. Mm-hmm. I clicked on mm-hmm. it. I know, I know, I shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. And they had been sexting back mm-hmm. and forth. Should I confront her? Mm-hmm. Should I confront her? I think so. I mean, hey, you know, if this is your girlfriend, if you guys are in a committed relationship (laughs) and, you know, she's, you know what I'm saying? Which this day and age, I don't even know what you call committed relationship anymore. But, you know, and she's sitting there messaging some other dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. You got to confront her and figure out what the deal with this is. You know, if not, you know, just go ahead and chunk the deuce. Chunk the deuce. Because that ain't going to fly. What you think, man? Man. You know, you could be, I, I'd say, yeah, confront her, but you could just be so petty about it. And you could, like, send all the pics to yourself. <laughs> send all the pics yeah. to your phone and just say, why does somebody keep texting me dick pics? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and just show oh, you, girl, man. those pics. That, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I don't know, you could she, just she'd be, get it, huh? be petty about it all, all different ways. Or you could just forward those pics to her from your phone, you know? Yeah. Mm. It's, it's funny. You, yeah, could, you could do that. You could go about this so many ways. Yeah. There's so many ways you can go about it. But, uh, you know, the thing is, you know, if you see something wrong, you know, let's go ahead and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You, can, you can find ways to be petty. You can find ways to just say it straight up. You know, just talk about it. We want to know. Want to know what happens in that situation. Mm. Want to know mm. what happens mm. in that mm. situation. All right, cool. Well, uh, man, it's, it's that time of the show, you know, where, where uh, you know, you tap your love box. You reach back with your hand, bust that love box wide open, and you tap it. Bam. So, JQ's the music. Bust it wide open. And, uh, yeah, we, we get it going. So, wow. Um, here we go. So, if, uh, you know, you ever had some random person pull up to your house with a box, just drop it off, ring the doorbell, and run. (laughs) You came out and was surprised, oh, it's my Amazon package. (laughs) Tap your love box. Bam. Sounds like Memphis Divas may have to do that. Just drop and run. Just drop and run. Cover your head. Make sure no shots come blasting. Damn. All right. If you uh, if you got a dumb friend, 
that you love to keep around just to make just because they make you laugh tap your love box and if you don't then maybe you're the dumb friend hmm think about it yeah everybody has stuff it's messed up um if you if you think it's sort of interesting and funny at the same time and salty at the same time that a Houston judge decided to release all the juvenile defendants who appeared before him because he lost his seat yeah. in Tuesday's election heard about that. The, to Natalia Oaks tap your little box that's funny <laughs> and the only question he asked them is, "Y'all not I'm planning on ki- y'all not planning on killing anybody?" Okay, y'all could go. Wow, that was funny. That was amazing. Wow, wow, wow. pretty damn petty, but you know, that's what it is. All right. Uh, if you're like amazed that Dubai is training police to ride on flying motorcycles tap your love box because mm-hmm. that's awesome I saw that that's crazy that's sort that's of wild I, I saw that that's sort of crazy that is sort of crazy but then it is it's sort of cool it right, is you know? it is pretty cool hey it's, I just want one just to have one now mm-hmm. it will it will definitely be a thing uh, you know that that comes out people one day will all be sort of riding on her bikes. You know what I'm saying? Just think about that. Hopefully in my life. Then it's going to be like all those futuristic movies that we get to watch where people are like flying in the air, like on the fly, on the sky high freeway. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So, yes indeed, yes indeed, yes indeed. Well, um, wow. Uh, If you don't play that pumpkin pie stuff on Thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. tap your love box. All this Thanksgiving talk has made you hungry. Tap your love box, because I know I'm hungry. I ain't eat breakfast yet. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Wow. Um. Let's see. If you ever walked in on a family member naked and you didn't cover your eyes, tap your love box, because I'm trying to figure out how you couldn't cover your eyes. It was a bad sight. Maybe you just didn't care. Maybe your family room was just open like that. You guys just have one of those families where you guys just all sort of just walk around. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna tell you what. I have a friend. Um, I guess we have we have family friends uh, who, I guess, years ago when their kids were little, um, you know, when their kids were little, they used to have something they called uh, what was it like? Uh, it was called like. Naked Saturday or something like that. What? 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 I mean, you know, where they would just sort of walk around free because I think the couple did that before they had kids. Okay. Before they had kids. So then the kids are just you know they would just sort of walk around and just be free. Wow. Well, I mean, like the I think the kids were still. This was I think they did that, and then when they finally had you know kids, you know they did it up to like the first like year or something, and then maybe it got weird. I don't know. But they just walk around and call it like naked naked Saturdays or sort of naked Sundays. I can't remember. I thought it's crazy, man. But it's true. Interesting. It's true. Interesting. No. Nope. <laughs> yeah. If you if you have naked weekends with your with your family, tap your butt. Man, man. If you try to go through this no nut November challenge and you only made it a few days. <laughs> Happy love box. Oh, wow. <laughs> I tried to. I'm sorry, people. I tried to. But I just couldn't make it. I don't. I don't subscribe to those types of challenges. I, I couldn't make it, man. I just. I thought I was gonna be strong. I heard it. It strengthens the brain. But you know. No, it, it just sort of makes you a little more aggravated. And agitated. Uh, yeah. You know. I was reading somebody. You need to somebody you got. Need to. Somebody got like a little horny just from seeing two rocks that look like butt cheeks <laughs> I mean you need to release uh, all the all the all the uh, pent up baby you know, uh, <laughs> frustrations 
frustration. <laughs> so you, you gotta do something. Um, wow. Um, so if you think it's funny that Waffle House always has these silly stories that happen, um, and crazy stories that happen, and you think it's funny that a half-naked man fell through the ceiling at a Waffle House in a failed robbery attempt. Tap your little box. Why were you naked? Yeah. Wow. What, what part of out. you was unclothed? <laughs> Right? Were you were you uh, top only or were you bottom? Like, what, what was the deal? <laughs> were you trying to, you know, relieve some of that pent up frustration in the <laughs> in the in the rafters <laughs> on the roof or something and it just got a little bit too much you fell through? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Apparently this man made the wrong step and he came down uh, into the dining area through the ceiling. He was trying to he was trying to rob the he was trying to rob the uh, the office area, which is funny because normally you know money and everything else that would be in there is going to be locked up, right? Um, With his balls in his hands. Wow. <laughs> I mean, God, I mean, like for real. Uh, let's see here. Oh wait, there's a video of it. Uh, oh. There's a whole. Oh no! <laughs> Somebody was like legitimately taken. They, okay, so I, I know the people can't see the video that we're laughing at while you listen to our show. But um, here yeah, I'm, I'm listening to you. But um, so somebody was legitimately taken like a like an Instagram video or something on their phone, right? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> in the middle of the video, dude falls out the ceiling. <laughs> what? And then he, I can see. Uh, he fled the scene in a in a car with another man. What the? Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh, you know. So this what is what's so stupid. What's going on? So I, I don't know, man. I don't know, but apparently, apparently, this guy, um, you know, he he fled the scene. Oh wait, here we go. Oh, they heard some cracking. They heard some cracking upstairs. They were called the maintenance guy. Wow. Trying to push his way out. They thought he was on drugs or something. Well, apparently he was. Somebody said hey, they how does, how, does, Not how late does Waffle House stay open? This looks like it's in the daytime. Though. I know, but does Waffle House have a closing time? Hours. Or is it open like 24? Not open 20. I think it's a 24 hour place. So they was just going to bust through the roof at like midnight or 2 a.m. and try to rob like yeah, I guess one so, or right? on, on duty. They was just going to live up there or something like that. Like stay up there until yeah until it cleared out. The Waffle House to me it always seemed like they got people there eating like all the time. always seemed like Waffle House got people there. So anyway, so this is what happened. So he uh, fled the scene in a car with another man, and the two were involved in a police chase. Uh, they eventually drove the car to a park and ran off. Uh, the second man hasn't been identified, but police were able to identify Bost, which was the guy who fell through the ceiling. Uh, let's see, what's his name? Uh, Wesley Bost. Um, because he left his license in his pants at the Waffle House, having used them to tie the, the bathroom door closed. Oh, so he went to the bathroom and then he went up and tried to hide. Holland told the Times Daily uh, warrants are expected for Boss on Tuesday for first degree criminal mischief and burglary. So yeah, so this fool went there to eat. Then he went to the restroom and climbed through the restroom seat. Cause he tried, tra- cause he tied the door closed. Come on, man. Come on. He 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 been watching too many too many like you know cat burglar movies. I don't understand. Anyway, yeah. So don't be stupid out there, people. Don't be stupid. Don't be like this. Thing. All right. Rob somebody the old fashioned way. Exactly. 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 Or 
or just don't rob them. How does that sound? <laughs> just go and get your money some other way. Like, really, how much money you think you're going to steal from Waffle House? Come on, dog. I'm sure they got, like, a cash register, like, in some 20s. Yeah. I mean, it, it ain't it, worth climbing you, through the ceiling. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't worth uh, getting a robbery charge to take that. Not at all. Do that to a bank. Like, go climb inside, like, a bank <laughs> ceiling and, like, fall into the the, the vault or something. No. The teller area? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, can't fall into a vault because it's, like, steel or you know what I mean. Yeah. That's insane, man. That's insane. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Anywho. Uh, Anyhow. Yeah. I, I'm like, I think I done. You went, tapped yourself yeah, out? I, I done tapped my, my box, my love box out. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to, you know, uh, uh, send condolences to... The families, uh, you know, first mm, of all, that yeah. you know, having to endure these wildfires, and then second of all, the families from that the California bar, shooting, yeah. and then uh, you know, the families from the mosque, you know, mm. some crazy stuff, yeah. some crazy stuff going on out here. Yeah, uh, and it's not, it's not cool, you know. So uh, definitely <clears throat> sending, uh, you know, well wishes and prayers out, uh, you know, to those families, you know, for healing in those times. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, last, tap your love box. Uh, tap your love box if you think, uh, you know, it's dope that all 19 black women who ran mm. for judge in Harris County, Texas, which is basically, you know, Houston, Got him. won. Yep. Wow. That's amazing, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it'll, you know, continue to cause change mm. uh, in that state. So, yeah, that's pretty dope. And, and also a rest in peace to, to right. Dales Bryant's Achilles tendon. First day on the job, man, man, gone with the Saints. You thought gone? Could have had your ring. Y'all. Well, a earned yeah, he ring. Still yeah, have a he could have had an earned still ring. Technically, yeah, an earned ring. He just, yeah, he just sort of stand, uh, you know, stand on the sidelines now. Um, stand on the sidelines now and cheer on his. I was sure looking forward to seeing him play the Cowboys. Oh man, that would have been good to see. That would have been that would have been something great. Scoring a TD and running straight to the middle of the field, standing on the store, doing the TO thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have been great. That would have been great. Um, so two more things. Okay, so you think it's tap your little box if you think it's silly that the Girl Scouts are suing the Boy Scouts over the term Scout. <laughs> I mean, really? Like it's got to that Girl Scouts? Come on. And then also. Also, uh, I guess tap your little box if you think the Apple Store challenge is sort of funny. What is uh, people doing body rolls up in the Apple Store and not getting caught. I think that's sort of hilarious. Wow. <laughs> so whatever. Okay. All right. That's all I got. All right. I'm, I'm out too. All right, people. Um, hit us up. Twitter, Instagram, hashtag Blackout Pod, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spreaker, uh catch some of the episodes on youtube just the audio if it hadn't been like uh you know hit with a strike and they pulled it off um yeah youtube email is hashtag blackoutpod at gmail.com google voice mail you can hit us up 353blakpc35325272 hit up bossboxes.store get yourself a boss box subscription with a uh, 10% off from us, you hit out Blackout 10 in the checkout. Also, hit up some Etsy, get yourself some hooks, rubs, and spices. Hopefully, it gets to you just in time for Thanksgiving. You can sprinkle it all over your turkey and your stuffing and your whatever you're gonna eat, not your pumpkin pie. Oh, all over your meats. Yeah, um, yeah, do that. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Have a good Thanksgiving. This will probably be well. Yep. I'm sure we'll get one episode in by Thanksgiving, maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. So, yes, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Yes, yeah. indeed. I'm blacking out. All right, people. Black and out. Catch us.